Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Engineers often focus on stress results to ensure that the design is satisfactory. We would like to ensure that the stresses are not near the limits for yielding or failure. We may even wish to ensure a certain margin of safety in our designs. Furthermore, our complex products may contain various materials, each with different yield strengths. Evaluating each material separately can be a cumbersome process. This video will cover the stress tool in mechanical, which is a helpful way of calculating factors of safety easily, even with multiple materials. Now, let's have a look. What is a stress? A stress is a second order tensor with six components, namely Sx, Sy, Sz, Sxy, S, Xz, and Syz. We can plot these com stress components for a part as indicated. It's hard to determine if a material may fail if we have six stress components to evaluate simultaneously. Instead, we typically use a single scalar value to evaluate the material response. For example, a widely known scalar stress measurement is von Mises stress, which is called equivalent stress in ANSYS mechanical. This stress measure is generally used for ductile materials. If expressed in terms of stresses in x, y and z directions, von Mises stress can be expressed as the equation indicated here. Von Mises stress forms an unbounded cylindrical surface in the principal coordinates. For different values of the computed von Mises stress, the radius of the cylinder is different. For this one specific cylindrical surface, once the value of von Mises stress reaches this surface, the material starts to yield, which may be considered unacceptable or failure. In ANSYS mechanical, we can perform nonlinear analysis. Nonlinear analysis is useful if you want to know the behavior of the material after it yields, and in this analysis, the effect of large strain may need to be included. Also, there is a stress tool available. If you don't want the material to yield or fail in the simulation, you are designing against such situations by including a safety factor calculation available in the stress tool. In this video, we will discuss the stress tool and not the nonlinear analysis. Let's discuss more on the stress tool. The stress tool provides four different scalar measures of stress for us to evaluate if the material reaches failure in our simulation. These four stress measures are 1. Equivalent stress, max shear, max tensile, moha cooler. These four measures are helpful from brittle to ductile materials. For example, if you don't want the material to yield or fail in the simulation, you are designing against such situations by including the safety factor calculation. The stress tool calculates the safety factor for the simulation results. Before using this tool, the input material properties that can be defined are tensile yield strength, compressive yield strength, tensile ultimate strength and compressive ultimate strength. These input data are the limit stress that uses input as the yield or ultimate strength of the material. The factor of safety is defined as the ratio of the limit stress to the stress. When the factor of safety is less than 1, this indicates that the material has reached the stress limit and can be deemed as failed for that criteria. The stress limit can be set to yield strength or ultimate strength. The values are defined in engineering data as we discussed. Note that the yield strength or ultimate strength in engineering data is only for calculation of safety factor. It does not make the analysis or the material non-linear. Now let's have a look at the four different stress measurement provided in the stress tool. For the ductile material, we can look at the von Mises or max shear stress. The von Mises stress can be expressed in terms of principal stress as indicated by the expression here. 
Similarly, the stress curve of max shear stress is represented by the principal stress as indicated in the expression here. We can see that the yield surface in principal stress coordinate for both von Mises stress and the Tresca stress. If the material reaches the yield surface, then the material starts to yield. Both von Mises and Tresca are defined by the differences between the three principal stress components instead of the absolute principal stress value. For example, given a stress state in the material, if the three principal stresses are large, but the differences between them are small, the material might not yield at all. Consider a metal under triaxial compression or tension. The metal is not likely to fail because the difference between the three principal stress components will be zero. Again, these criteria discussed here are applicable for ductile materials. But what about brittle materials? For brittle materials, we can evaluate the material based on max tensile stress theory or use Mohr Coulomb criteria. For max tensile failure will occur when the maximum principal stress sigma 1 developed in the body exceeds the material strength limit. For example, if a brittle material such as concrete is in a state of loading that produces primarily tensile stress. For Mohr Coulomb, this theory is similar to max tensile stress failure theory but also adds a term including compressive stresses. Mohr Coulomb criterion uses the sum of maximum tensile stress to the material's tensile limit and the minimum compressive stress to the material's compressive limit. It accounts for compressive stress in a simplified manner whereas the max tensile criteria does not take the compressive stress into account. Users should be familiar with the expected mode of deformation to pick a suitable criteria. Materials that primarily fail in tension will give similar results using either of these two criteria if sigma 1 dominates, that is the tensile stress dominates, but if compression is present, Mohr Coulomb can address this situation. In all of the described cases, we usually design with a factor of safety greater than 1 to provide some conservatism in case any of our assumptions may be a little off. So we may seek a factor of 1.5 or 2 or even more. The safety margin output is simply the factor of safety minus 1 providing us with how much margin we have to work with. Now. Let us see a simple example of two concentric tubes to illustrate the stress tool usage. The outer tube is made of titanium alloy and the inner tube is made of copper alloy. We will be using a quarter symmetric model for the analysis. We have the analysis starting file for the analysis. Open the starting file in ANSYS workbench. Open the engineering data. We see that by default structural steel is the material defined for analysis. We need to add titanium alloy and copper alloy to our engineering data. To do this, click on engineering data, sources tab, then select general materials. We can see that the titanium and copper alloy are in the list. Add these two material to our data. For titanium alloy, note that it has a tensile yield strength of 930 MPa. We can also input ultimate stress for the material. But for this example, we will use the default tensile yield strength. Similarly, for copper alloy, the tensile yield strength is 280 MPa. Note that since we are not evaluating the behavior of material after it yields, this is not a non-linear analysis. After adding material, let's go back to the project schematic window. The geometry file for the project is already defined. We see a refresh sign on the model cell because we updated the engineering data. Double click on the model cell, say yes to read the upstream data and open the mechanical model. First, let's check the unit system. Click on home tab, 
and set the unit as metric mmkg system. In the tree outline, expand the geometry and select the outer tube. In the details window under material assignment, assign titanium alloy as the material for outer tube. Similarly, assign copper alloy as the material for inner tube. We will change the display to material based. Go to display tab, display style and choose the material. Because both tube have a different material assignment, they are displayed in different colors. Next, let us have a look at the symmetry. We are using a quarter symmetric model and the symmetry planes are x, y and y, z planes respectively. Corresponding to x, y plane, we have one symmetry object defined and we also have one symmetry object defined corresponding to y, z plane. The tubes share the topology and hence we do not see any connections between them. They form a multi-body part. Mesh is already defined for the model. Now let us apply the loads and boundary conditions for the model. The model is constrained in x and z directions by the symmetry object and we need to constrain the model in y direction just to prevent the rigid body motion. Right mouse click on a static structure, insert displacement. Change the geometry selection filter to vertex and scope displacement geometry to a vertex at an end of the outer tube and set the displacement in y direction to be zero. We will now apply the moment at the free end of the concentric tubes. Right mouse click on a static structure to insert moment. Define the moment by components and scope the moment to the free end faces of the tube. Set the Z component of the moment to be minus 1.5 E raised to power 6 Newton mm. The model is ready to be solved. Right click on the static structure to solve. The model is solved now and let us first look at the total deformation. Looking at the deformation, we see that the tube is bending as expected. Right click on the solution branch, insert stress, equivalent stress and evaluate the result. The maximum equivalent stress is 340 MPa and we cannot directly say which material and at which locations the material has yielded or failed using the equivalent stress plot. But Using the stress tool, we can determine whether the materials has yielded or failed. Since ductile materials are assigned to both the tubes, we can use maximum equivalent stress safety tool or the maximum shear stress safety tool. For this example, we will use the maximum equivalent stress safety tool. It is based on the maximum equivalent stress failure theory, which states that if the failure is defined by yielding, then the maximum equivalent stress should be greater than the yield strength of the material. This tool compares the equivalent stress in the model with the yield strength of the material. Right mouse click on the solution, insert stress tool, map maximum equivalent stress tool. We will define the stress tool by tensile yield per material. Right click to evaluate the results. When we see the safety factor and turn on the minimum probe, we can see that minimum safety factor is on the copper tube at the interface of copper and titanium tube. Let us add an equivalent stress plot for the copper tube only and see the location of maximum equivalent stress on the copper tube. Right click on the solution branch, insert stress, equivalent stress. Scope the geometry to the copper tube and evaluate the result. Under result tab, turn on the maximum value of the probe. If we see the maximum equivalent stress for the copper tube only, 
then it turns out to be at the same location as that of the minimum safety factor location. This is because safety factor in this case is the ratio of tensile yield distance to the equivalent stress at that point. Also, based on the plot of the safety factor, we can see that titanium tube will not undergo yielding whereas the copper tube will see yielding. Since the minimum safety factor is less than 1 and it indicates that the copper material has failed the yield criteria. Hence, using a stress tool make our lives easier by showing in one plot which parts or locations are safe or prone to failure even if they are made of different material. This concludes our workshop demo. To give a quick summary, stresses are important results used to determine whether the material has failed against the applied load by comparing it with the material strength limit. For designing against failing, the stress tool is used which includes a safety factor. Safety factor is used to evaluate the design against yielding and ultimate failure criteria. If factor of safety is less than 1, it indicates that the material has failed the respective failure criteria. We should choose stress measures based on the type of the material as well as the expected mode of deformation may be compressive or tensile in our design. Maximum equivalent stress or von Mises and maximum shear stress or Tresca are used to predict yielding in ductile material which can include many engineering metals and some plastic. Maximum tensile stress and Mohawk coulomb are used to predict fracture in brittle materials such as glass, cast iron, concrete and even rock just to name a few. Note that the yield strength limit and ultimate strength limit we input in engineering data is not for defining the non-linear behavior of the material. It's solely for the calculation of safety factor. Thanks for watching and don't forget to visit courses.ansys.com to discover more useful courses.